Just uh, less than a week until Fed members enter their latest blackout period ahead of an interest rate decision at the end of the month. Central bankers will get new reads on inflation this week, and they'll be weighing last Friday's cooler than expected jobs report, but it was after a really hot ADP report. Joining us to talk about what the data could mean for the path of Fed rate hikes is Eric Rosengren, former president of the Boston Fed. He's a visiting scholar at MIT's Gallup Center. And it's good to see you, uh, Eric. The, the, uh, w which numbers were most important in your view uh, from, from last week? Uh, the employment data by far is more important than the ADP. Now, the ADP is not designed to actually match the labor market for the entire United States. It's reflecting primarily uh, ADP customers. So if you have a disconnect between the two, uh, the one that I would always pick is the employment report. And as you noted, uh, the employment report, payroll employment, was uh, 209,000. That's uh, much lower than people were estimating. But I think it's going to reflect the fact that the employment payroll has been increasing at a decreasing rate. And I expect that to continue. So if you look at the employment components, uh, government was up 60,000. I don't expect that to continue going forward. And I do think that we're starting to see uh, weakness in some sectors of the economy. I think consumers are getting to the point uh, where they're not going to be able to spend excess saving like they were before. Uh, the labor market is still relatively tight, unemployment at 3.6 percent. But I do expect that there's going to be an easing as we get into the second half of the year. That's quite consistent with the staff forecast uh, of the Federal Reserve that in the minutes highlighted that they're expecting the unemployment rate to gradually go up over the course of this year and next. Did the moves in the 10-year and the two-year surprise you on, on Thursday? I was surprised. Usually, you don't get that large a reaction to the ADP report. So I was a little surprised by how much of a reaction there was, uh, both on Thursday, which I thought was an overreaction and a bit of a head fake. Um, I think the employment report's much more consistent with a, a gradually slowing economy. I would also highlight that internationally, one reason that uh, you're seeing oil prices soft uh, at the same time that Saudis are cutting back on production is that global demand is down and global demand is down because China is weak and Europe is relatively weak. And I do think we're going to see the U.S. Uh, softening further as we get into the second half of the year as the delayed reaction to the interest rate increases and assuming that uh, more than likely they increase uh, rates again in July. Would you... You wouldn't raise in July, would you? I actually probably would, given that core PCE still going at 4.6 percent. Uh, the staff forecast was for over the year, the core PCE would end the year at 3.7 percent. That's going to require the core PCE to come down quite a bit in the second half. So uh, it's really expecting uh, much weaker inflation numbers as we go forward. I'm not sure it's going to come down quite as quickly as the staff. But what I wouldn't do is anticipate necessarily a second increase, because I do think both the real GDP uh, economic numbers are going to be weaker in the second half of the year. And I do think there's going to be a softening in the inflation indices as we get in the second half of the year, maybe not quite as dramatic as what the staff has in their forecast. We had a prediction earlier in the show of a much cooler CPI number on Wednesday due to used cars and actually the core number being lower. It, would that shock you? Is it possible? It's possible that core is lower. I don't think it's going to be low enough to change the FOMC's view that uh, core PCE is still way too high. Even if core CPI comes down, core CPI up to now is 5.3 percent over the last year. So it's a long way away from 2 percent. So I'd be very surprised if the number was so weak that it deterred the FOMC. What it might do, though, is discourage that second uh, dot plot increase that many members of the FOMC were anticipating. So that would be consistent with my own forecast that uh, they're going to go up in July and then the data is going to come in weak enough that they don't have to do a second one, uh, presumably in October. But uh, that depends on how the economic data comes in. And if I'm wrong and the economy stays relatively strong and inflation stays elevated at the core level, uh, then they'll probably do that second increase. 
The bond market started catching up with the Fed <clears throat> on Thursday. And, and, but then, as you said, it, it didn't last that long. And now we're still kind of in different worlds. I mean, why is the two year, I mean, if we're going to five and a half or six, the two year is still below five. And the 10 year certainly looks like it's expecting cuts sooner than, than the Fed or anybody else believes right now. Why, why are we still so, have such a big disconnect? A lot depends on how much you think the second half of the year is going to weaken. So if you think it's going to be uh, relatively softer and, if anything, a, a mild recession, uh, that's a very different forecast than if you think it's going to be much more severe. So I think the market is anticipating a more substantial slowdown than I would expect in the second half of the year. But I do expect a slowdown. So I think all the trends are towards uh, weakening data but maybe not to the degree that some people in the bond market are anticipating. 